and welcome back to the Blue and Gold Report. It is my pleasure to have former UC Irvine men's basketball player Jerry Green on the show for our alumni segment. Jerry, thanks for being a guest. Uh, thanks for inviting me. It's great to be home. You know, you're one of the most storied ant eaters in men's basketball history. You know, your four-year career just full full of accolades. But you know what I want to get into is where where did basketball take you after UCI? Um, fortunately, basketball took me overseas. Um, at the time, I was kind of disappointed. You know, it's everybody's dream to make it to the NBA. But uh, you know, I thank God for allowing me to play overseas. I've been in Germany. I've uh, been to Italy played in Belgium. So uh, it's been a great experience. Where, what, where's your favorite place that you've been? My favorite place was Italy. Um, I love Italian food. So to be able to get authentic Italian food was great. The competition is wonderful. Um, but as far as living, I would have to say Germany. Really? It, yeah, because Germany is, is uh, so Americanized and um, you have so many uh, military people stationed So. It's interesting. Uh, you get you come across a military guy. Um, he's from Michigan, so you just automatically hit it off. And uh, also, I got access to the base, so nice. it's nice to get American food in Germany. <laughs> you know, so uh, yeah, I, I would say far as living Germany, but as far as competition, I would say hands down uh, Italy. What was the f what were the fans like in each of those countries? Who had the best fans? <coughs> Who were you know, did we have any hooligans like you do in British soccer where they're just, you know, on you? The great, for me, it was Italy. Uh, they are some diehard basketball fans. And um, this one particular place, um, I think the city is Caserta. Like, they, the, the fans, they're crazy. Like, they would throw stuff at you. <laughs> and it, it's like, it, it's nothing you can really do about it because a lot of those teams are owned by, like, the mafia. Oh it's God. really like that. People think that's a joke. Like, it's really like that. So, I, I don't want to throw anything back because <laughs> I want to live, you know? But, um, what are they uh, throwing at you? Are they throwing balls of wine? They, they, they throw batteries. They throw whatever. They throw batteries? Yes. Oh, my yeah. gosh. And a lot, um, a lot of times we have to get escorted uh, by the police just to get to the gym. Oh, my gosh. It's, it's really like that in some countries. Did that happen to the opposing fans at your home games? Like were they were your fans throwing things at the other team, um, or was it mostly just in, you were encountering this when you were on the road? Exactly on the road. Yeah. Oh my gosh. But our crazy. fans, our fans were were really good too. Yeah. But they wasn't, you know, they wasn't a gangster like the ones I'm telling you about <laughs> in Caserta. Yeah. Did you ever get threatened? Or I mean, you said you had to be escorted. But no, thank God, I never got did threatened. You, did you ever no. did you have to fix the game? Were you ever approached about fixing? Games? No, no. Thank no. God. But I've heard players, um, you know, okay. being in a situation like that. And, yeah, that, that, that's not good. Were you the only American on that team? No, no. no. Um, in Germany, well, right now in Germany, you can have, um, I think, up to seven Americans. Okay. Uh, I think Italy is like two or three. So you you always going to find an American on the team. Now, any teammates or players you played against while you were at UC Irvine, did they ever pop up overseas? I did play against uh, Jordan. In a, uh, in Jordan Harris in the scrimmage <laughs> game. That was pretty funny. Um, Who won? I think we won. Yeah. Yeah. We Jordan. Won. Yeah. <laughs> but other than that, no, I haven't came across anybody. Yeah. No. So do the Americans tend to stick together? Of do you, course. Do you guys meet up after games of and course. things like that? We, yeah. There, there, there's nothing like, you know, being being with your people. Yeah. Per se. Yeah. So, so tell us about Germany. You, how long have you been there? I know you're taking this year off, but right, Germany. I've been in Germany for five years. Mm -hmm. um, city called uh, Lutzburg, uh, really, really nice town, uh, historical. What's the biggest major city near that? Near Stuttgart. Your okay. Stuttgart's really yeah. nice. Okay. Stuttgart's like L.A. Traffic is crazy. Really? Yeah. Do you really drive crazy. in Germany? I do. Oh, okay. The driving is cool. Um, the autobahn. Uh huh. It's serious. Have you hit 120? I have. <laughs> At I, first, I'm not going to lie, the very first time I got on Autobahn, I was scared. <laughs> because when you see those cars driving, it's like, this is real life. Like, they really drive like that. But once you live there for a while, you, you have to, sooner or later, you have to get on Autobahn, right. you know, to go places. So you just get used to it. I drove in Germany. Well, I didn't dro drive in Germany once. I was driven in Germany once, and we okay. got onto the Autobahn, and yeah, I was it's scared. Serious. It's serious. Oh, my gosh. And you're just pressed against your seat, and they are, they're flying. They are. And it's it's crazy, but it's normal. Yeah, it's normal. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
and and, and it's, it's kind of make that adjustment. I'm used to driving like that. Okay. So when it's time for me to come home in California, I have a tendency to, yeah, I'm like, okay, Jerry, you're in California. You can't be driving like that. You don't go to jail and get a ticket. So I got to make that adjustment. How fast did you drive on the 405 coming here? I'll, I'll say I'm, I'm fine now. Yeah. I drove 70, 75. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The most 80. Well, good. I won't look for you on those uh, police car no, chases no, on TV. No. Um, you know, so let's go back to, you know, you talked a little bit about the disappointment you encountered, you know, coming right out of UC era. You wanted mm. to play in the NBA. But how did that process begin for you when you started to look for a job overseas? What can you describe to our fans what that process is like, who you speak to, who counsels you, how much research you have to do on your own? Well, um, I kind of had it easy. During my junior, senior year, I already have agents coming to the games. Okay. So the one agent I'm with, uh, Ben Pensack, he followed me pretty much all my senior year. I actually didn't go with him the first time. I went with another agency. Okay. That didn't work out. So I ended up going with my agent, Ben Pensack. Okay. And um, it's good to have an agent that's well-connected and um, that has a good resume. So uh, a lot of teams, especially uh, in Italy and Germany, they knew my agent and they know he's a good agent. Okay. So it was much easier for me, you know, to get a job. Are some of those, now are some of those agencies really well known or did you just kind of look at this guy's resume and see what he had done and just... just right, I pretty much, yeah, seen uh, his track record, who he had, whatever, and um, I just kept hearing good things about him. He's a good guy. Okay. And um, so good I, word of mouth for sure. Yes, yes, and I'm just glad that I never, I never had an issue with my agent. Okay. I've been with him for man seven, eight years now. Honest, loyal, and um, you just, you just hardly find that in in the basketball business. You always hear about shady agents taking money and all that. I just thank God I never had an issue like that with him. Now you you said that you didn't go with him initially. For for student athletes who are considering a job or considering a career overseas, um, what are some of the pitfalls they need to watch out for when they're when they're looking for someone to represent them? Um, like I said, just resume who they had. Um, if it's possible, try to find a person um, that used to be with that agent and ask them why did they leave them. Okay. I think that's important. Okay. And then um, and just go from there. Now, did you have problems with the first person? Were they taking money? Were they? They wasn't taking money. I just felt like, um, actually, my first agent was LeBron a LeBron James first agent. Okay. Um, I can't really think of his name right now, but um, he was he was so focused on LeBron, which I understand he's LeBron James. Right. I just felt like he wasn't given as much time for me. So okay. I'm like, that's cool. Let me just go on with someone that's going to focus on on Jerry Green. Okay. So now. Your agent, does he deal mostly with uh, college players such as yourself who went overseas? Does he also have NBA players in the mix? He did have some couple NBA players. I don't remember their names. But he, he uh, pretty much focused on kids uh, in college senior years that, that wants to go overseas. overseas. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah. So you are taking a year off. Can you, can you talk about why that happened and where you hope to go after this year? Um, the reason why I took this year off, I've been doing this. Man, 10 and a half, 11 years straight. Time flies, huh? It does. <laughs> it does. It just seemed like, you know, I was here, you know, playing in the brand center. But um, I just tired, you know. I'm mm -hmm. 33 years old now. Um, just tired, not so much physically, just mentally. Mm -hmm. Because I'm pretty much gone from August all the way to May, the end of May. Okay. I just miss out on so much, you know. I have a niece, I have a nephew. They're growing up in front of me. Um, I miss out on so many Christmases, Thanksgivings. Um, thank God I'm in a position financially where I didn't have to play this year. Mm -hmm. So I say, you know what, let me just take this year off, spend this time with my family, you know, experience Christmas. I've been home for Christmas since, I couldn't even tell you the last time I was home for Christmas. Well, at least 10 years. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's um, a lot of Christmases to miss. So I was just like, you know what? Money's not everything, you know. Money can't buy happiness. Money can't buy family time. So, I'm just gonna take this time and just and just chill. And it's been wonderful. Now, when you know it's been ten years, you're taking the your, your one first year off now. Was it harder earlier in your career because you were a new player within the system, and now you've come, you're a veteran, so you're able to ask for that time off? What's what's that like for you? Um, in the beginning, yes, it was tough because I knew I definitely couldn't afford to take a whole season off, okay. you know, 
So I just had to suck it up. Um, I'm not going to lie. My very first year, I cried. <laughs> I did. I'm not going to lie. I cried because this is the first time I'm away from my family. Right. You know? And you're very, you're very close exactly. to family. Exactly. People that know me know I'm very family mm-hmm. oriented. So um, being away from, especially for Christmas, I think we had that, I think we had the day off and I had nowhere to go. You know, I had, my family didn't come to see me. Um, I was pretty much... I, fe- I was just I felt alone, mm-hmm. you know, and um, that the first first year was was very tough, but as the years keep going on, you just you just get used to it, mm-hmm. and then um, once you know you get a lot of Americans on the team, you just start forming. You know, we're gonna have Christmas dinner together, mm-hmm. Thanksgiving and stuff like that. So, it makes it a little bit easier, but can't nothing replace you know you Your being actually family. home yeah. exactly. So you must have a nice extended family in Germany now with you know the American players that are there right. plus the military people that you've exactly. become friends with as well as their families. Right. So now you have a good su- exactly. support system there. And we still keep in contact. Uh, one of my good friends, uh, he just had a baby. Him okay. and his wife, they got married last year, so he had a child send me the picture. So it's wonderful. That's that's one thing about Europe, you know, I love. The competition is great, but it's just the friendships that you've created and, you know, you just keep in contact, so it's cool. Now, are you able to travel around outside of Germany while while in season to kind of visit some other countries, or is it you're just locked in? To um, I'm pretty much just locked in in Germany because we play a lot of games, and we, you know, in Europe, we usually practice twice a twice a day. Okay. So, uh, yeah, you don't have too much time to do anything. Well, so after ten years of living this life, what advice can you give to current players, or you know? players that are looking to start a career overseas as far as acclimating to the lifestyle as far as you know contract negotiations what are some of the things that you want to offer I think my biggest thing is um, if you really if you really 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 want to play uh, overseas basketball I just think you just have to have tough skin Um, they not you know here in college we spoil you know we get shoes you know everything is kind of catered to us in Europe that's not always the case you pretty much got to do everything on your own there's certain things you got to find out on your own you know you got to go to a doctor's appointment they won't tell you where it is you know they might you know say uh, make a left here like a lot of a lot of times you got to find those stuff on your own okay so Uh, no one with that organization is providing someone to help you not all the time wow okay. not all the time sometimes yeah but sometimes it is it's not were you were you lucky at all in that sense in belgium or italy or i Germany? was i was okay. very fortunate to have help yeah okay. but I've but heard, you've heard some horror yes. stories what are some of the horror stories oh man horror stories um I, for one guys not getting paid okay that's that's the biggest thing and that's sad you know because mm-hmm. some teams you say you have a contract, but, you know, they, they don't go by the contract, you right. know. Sometimes uh, a lot of players get their money late, you know. You got to deal with that. You got to make a decision, okay, am I going to stay with this team even though I'm not getting paid or if I'm going to just leave. Right. So it's just, you just never know what's going to happen playing in Europe. Wow. You just never know. What's been kind of the experiences that you've heard about when guys don't get played? Do they end up leaving and the is that money just gone? Or yeah. Do they, is there an avenue for them to actually um, fight the contract or fight with You can fight the contract, but, you know, the, the, the law in Europe is, is totally different. Okay. You know, in America, you know, if you ain't getting paid and you're on a contract, right. you don't have to worry about it. You're going to get your money. Right. But in Europe, you might get your money, but you might not get it two years later. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. It's so slow. It, it, it's totally different. And it's if you leave now, basically you're trying to if, fight the fight. If you leave, overseas. you can forget about your money. Okay. You can forget about it. Gosh, that's yeah. It's it's like that. That's why I'm saying you have to have tough skin because you just never know what kind of situation you're going to be put into. Wow. And don't be and don't lose. Don't lose. If don't lose, you might not. Some some presidents be like, um, say you're on a four or five game losing streak, you might get your money late. Oh wow. Yeah. They just do that. They they just do they do that. It's like that. But that didn't happen to you. It happened to me before. Okay. But we ended up winning, so. So you, yeah, you eventually got your yeah, money. Yeah, we like guys. Like we need to start winning some games here. That had to be. I mean, but that wasn't just you though. That was your entire the team. The entire team. Wow. Entire team. Yeah. So it's, that it's, it's real like that out there. I had to think that that was a very rude awakening. It was. That happened. It was. It, it makes you realize, okay, I'm not in the states. Right. Yeah. Gosh. <laughs> I mean, you're pretty much powerless at this point. You now are. You have to win. Exactly. Wow. Exactly. But at least you're banding together with your team. Exactly. Yeah. To win. Yeah. 
So you're really playing for your money. Now, were there a lot of, were there any conflicts? Were there, you know, what was the adjustment like just playing with Germans or playing with Italians or playing with Belgians? Uh, just the different styles, you know, okay. it, 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 it's really different out there. Um, did the cultural differences make a big difference, or was did you have the common denominator of basketball, and that kind of helped? Yeah, just, just the style of play. Okay. You know, is different. Um, one thing about Europe that I do like is very team oriented. Okay. You know, usually in the states, you know, you got stars. They do. They pretty much do their own thing. Right. But in in Europe, it's not like that. They don't care how good you are if you don't play within their system. You're gonna have a problem with them. Oh wow! Yeah, that was, was that good. an adjustment for you because you were a star at UCLA? It was. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. My really? very first year, yeah, because I'm. That's what I was used to. Right. You know. You were the man. It, exactly. <laughs> Got in Europe, they're like, uh, no, buddy, really? we, we need you to pass. Yeah. Wow. So. Wow. How, it, it was adjustment. How How long did it take for you to kind of let go? Of your it took me stubborn, about stubborn. I say about the first half of the season. Really. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Gosh, that's just that's really interesting it to hear is. because you really you know you go from high school where pretty much high school where you know you're the big fish the in exactly. high school and then you go into uci yeah. and you, you become the big fish and right. then now you go to europe and suddenly it's like you, it's you can like, still be the man but you don't get to play like the man trust me it's you're starting all over again wow. so what you did in high school doesn't matter what you did in college doesn't matter it's like you're 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 starting over 